have no idea what you're about. Tell me in a sentence who you are. I'm nobody. I'm a tramp, a bum, a hobo. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. And a straight racer if you get too close to me. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. stuffs a fork in her mouth mm. and is now staring at me expectingly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello? I was told to pick up some supplies from here for the, uh, the festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone in here. There isn't. That's why I come in here too. She picks up another fork full. Doesn't that mean you're here then? You know? She raises an eyebrow as if she was suspect, as if she was suspecting my observation was false. You're pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. I sound Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Ren. Tezuka Ren. Ren Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you. But at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. The deadpan manner of talking makes it see, makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothered me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's in what's appropriate and whether this girl is. She seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearn, yearningly back at her food. Continue my lunch, if, if you don't mind. I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Uh, go right ahead. But, uh, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use, then? There's no word for a meal you eat after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much, too. But I, I, I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you were supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But, but I'm hungry, now, and my delicious box of lunch won't, would go to waste otherwise. I have curry, and it's very delicious. With, uh, with much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes, and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I... I was told to look for these things. No, no, it's school. From outside, you look fine. What, what's your problem inside? Deep inside. I, I come to a full stop, opening my mouth, but not getting a word out. I, uh... I, I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question. Or skirts around it somehow. I, I, I don't know which I would have done. Froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition, or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this is a part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here can relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances, or Lily's either, you know. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overly contemptual... A contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if she were, to, as if the answer were written up there. Maybe it is. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window's uh, side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I, I don't think it's anything in your head, or and uh, something in your guts would be boringly ordinary. This is this is lunch of mine. It's less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catching me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Rin's eyes widened in revelation and astonishment. So, I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? What? She partially... Still partially in shock, but uh, recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing that I can think of. 
No, 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 nothing like that. I have a heart problem, arrhythmia. I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and, and uh, glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with that reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you, just, uh, I, I collect people, and, uh, a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? Like a serial killer? People with different problems. Huh. So you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. With little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away, but I keep thinking about what she said collecting people. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it like every other student here so far. Should I have told it like a natural part of the introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hassan Akai and I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us? What a disgusting thought or maybe this Tezuka girl just had an unnatural interest in such things. As I walked to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and lack of arms makes her look very thin, all scrawny. She's not particularly... Uh, pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs, even as she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this sign could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, uh, do you always eat alone and, uh, this late, or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors? Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, if she's not horsing around. Horsing? Like with a horse? She likes to do sports. Oh. And that's uh, all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bit of her meal into her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was just thinking about taking a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you are going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Well, perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping. How the fuck did she know? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I'll, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at the point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws you back in. Fine, then, um, Hassau. Then you are. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, but I, I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you around, Sal. Why so serious? There is something like a uh, tiny smile there on her face, maybe. Anyway, I quickly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face. I whisper to myself, What the fuck? <laughs> From inside, I hear a muffled, sing-song voice. I heard that. Oh, what, 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 what did she? Oh, jeez. <laughs> what did she hear? 
I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not <laughs> heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance of me while make without making a sound. Creepy! It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about the global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that thought aside. Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as if she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. <laughs> no, wait, more importantly, who's in there? There's there's no club meetings today. She tried tries to curiously peek past me even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? He <laughs> took so long. We had, we had to come check what's wrong. You know, not, that's not good, he <laughs> tried. She, she wags a finger, uh, scolding me. I, I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, I, I got the things here. I was just going to bring them. <laughs> I think you were up to some mischief, Mihichan. <laughs> Who, who's in there with you, huh? I wonder. Uh, Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing out, uh, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Oh, Shizune immediately pushes away past me and opens the door to the classroom. I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's uh, diligence and attitude, the isolation, uh, insolence of a of daring to do. To face school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much for her to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few, a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to f sign furiously at Misha. Uh, what a bitch. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She's a very loaded stare at me too as if somehow this is somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason for my tardiness. 